What's up, y'all? You're watching Capsize, and uh, we're here in the studio that we've somewhat grown accustomed to again, I'd say, huh? I, I think it's like falling off a bicycle, bro. Yeah, I hurt myself. Yeah, it just hurts, <laughs> it hurts every time. No, man, it's really great. We're, uh, you know, um, and the best part is on a skeleton crew, we can do all the work that it used to take five or six people to do. And just because of the experiences we've had doing it, I'm paranoid enough to spend about an hour checking everything 27 times so that it is okay for a skeleton crew to take care of, right? The, uh, the funny thing, and I don't know if you know this, uh, this is how this rolls. Reverend will get here early, setting up the lights. I'll come in about the same time, I'll, and uh, I'll start rolling out cable, and Dave is like, back and forth finding out what works what doesn't work what what needs help and then inevitably he has to pull out his case with all of your stuff so we're uh, trying to get into a situation where we use nothing but the austin public gear th that would be great but you've got he's got this little magic box that he carries so he's self-sufficient for when he's out filming bands when you're out filming bands um, you know, you can do five, six cameras, whatever people want, yeah, yeah. or whatever level uh, that they can afford. It sure. seems to be uh, great. You've it's a got good the clips with the cameras, and so it's a good backup, man. I mean, uh, the gear they have here is awesome to use in the studio, but uh, yeah, having my own thing is quite quite freeing. So I can, you know, well, do what I want when I want. The thing also is, is if we didn't have that backup, we wouldn't be doing this right now. <laughs> you know you know yeah yeah you know so yeah we do uh, a show called capsize this is what you're watching we did start that show uh technically i started it uh in 89 sue cole taught me how to do these edits of footage that i would shoot on this suitcase sized vhs camera on my shoulder it used to look like a giant boom box yep absolutely larry from the hit would come by and rub my belly <laughs> that's how i knew it was larry and, While you were filming? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that was at the back room mostly, but uh, I did spend some early years at Steamboat 2, Van Wilkes Nights when he was doing Z102 shows. Uh, and, that, he's still out there jamming with Charlie Fountain yeah. of uh, Fisher Fountain Ford fame. <laughs> That's right. Fisher Fountain Ford fame. So but uh, what is that. a capsize? By the way, James, our lead crew dude, made these shirts, so I'm sporting that for you today. Capsize. It is all Texas music. We uh, showcase bands that typically don't get much exposure. Every once in a while, somebody pops on that has a following or you've heard of, but for the most part. I know. It's difficult to see me play again, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's folks who are out there struggling and trying to get their name, you know, in the mix. And You know, uh, speaking of, it's hard to believe that people wouldn't use this experience to... Um, add into their portfolio because it's such a great way to mark a stamp of time of where you are with your music. So I appreciate this. Thank you. Of what what uh, you do. Um, they aired my solo uh, acoustic thing um, last night and uh, a lot of positive feedback from that. Hey everybody, capsize! Yay! <laughs>
your knees, boy. Down on your knees. Down on your knees, boy. We're, we're putting those exclusively on Saturdays here on the channel, and uh, there is a Patreon that I have, patreon.com slash raw time, that you can join and get these before you see them live, so that's cool. And then a little bit after they go on, we will pop it up on YouTube with some ads and stuff so people can see what's going on, and we'd like everybody to be able to watch the show as much as possible. But uh, anytime there's some exclusive behind the scenes stuff, it ends up on Patreon too, especially like outtakes. mother would like I've always known somebody should yeah although tomorrow it don't look that good well it just goes to show though people say we're an unlikely couple I'm seeing double of you And everything's all right. Living, 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 living life. Oh, hope, well, I'm hopeless. I'm learning to cope with the emotionless mediocrity of day to day living. How can I help but be restless when? Everything seems to taste the sun. All of the colors seem to have faded away. Oh, this is life, and everything's alright. Living, 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 living life. Hold me like a mother would, like I'm always. Somebody should, yeah, although tomorrow <laughs> it don't look that good. Well, it just goes to show, though people say we're an unlikely couple. Doris Day and Mott the Hopple.
lethal dose is in here. Who gets it, I won't know. It's scary that it can be put into anything. We can't even see it or notice it. Hello, Austin, Texas. I'm Miles Zuniga from Fastball, and you're watching Capside. All right, hometown! Are you ready? That's not fucking good enough. I said, are you ready? Will you please welcome, for the great nation of Texas, Gethin recording artist, Brian! I'm not Stone Jets, Uh, pulled out this prop this used to be this is the phone thing that we used to take calls on and yeah so yeah we pulled it out for fun and for uh, uh, prosperity shits tried, and giggles yeah tried to plug it in and uh, nope they don't do phone calls anymore so uh, we'll probably act like we'll take a few phone calls you know but uh, hello caller you're live what's up you son here farmer <laughs> What's up, David Crosby? They would tolerate you. But we can, you know, probably get away with like doing a, a cell phone and holding it up to the mic and do some phone interviews, which I'm um, actually going to talk to Lori Markfart 
uh, from oh how old, cool is that backroom days yes. about her book. She has a book out, so we're going to get her on here. And um, it was cool whenever she popped back up uh, in the um, internet world, uh, and and you see all of these people that you played with 10, 20 years ago, and we look like the same people, only like um, older huh. folks. You yeah, know, right. it's, it's uh, we were kids playing rock and roll, and we're still playing, but we're all grown up a little bit. And sure, it's just, sure. It's uh, a trip to be that. And a lot of people have taken different paths and stuff, Lori, Lori being one. She actually uh, makes a little bit of music, but her thing is this book, and she's got a really great life going. So we'll, we'll get her on here soon and uh, chat with her. One, I'm very nervous, and it feels weird to be up here. And two, it's been a long fucking time. This song's called Meltdown.
I'm Kevin Fowler and you're watching Capsize. Yeah! What's up, girl? Do you know what day it is? Oh, um... It's my birthday, you forgot? Oh, yeah, 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 oh, um... Ah. Really? Say flowers on my birthday? I'm not the same 
the timing of the pandemic and the club closures, although go hand in hand, I think a lot of that was unfortunately happening regardless. You right. Know? And, um, kind of. I don't know if it's good to say someone had a reason to point a finger, but uh, some of this stuff had been in motion. And uh, it's a never changing scene in Austin. Like there's always evolving, whether, you know, for instance, the come and take it guy has got that place in uh, Buda now, I believe it is. Right. Kyle. 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 Yeah. And uh, some great shows come up, Broken Teeth and Snakeskin Prison are playing out there. Now, you know, what's really cool is we did a benefit for A.D. Hernandez, and uh, he's, uh, you might know little Joe uh, in La Familia. Uh, it's his son, and he does uh, music for the soul. And so he's got a soul band called ADH Project. Anyway, he went through a heart thing. We were up there with all the A-listers and we got, we got to play. Sounds great, looks great, but the scariest thing about playing there is you're in the middle of <laughs> and the ground starts shaking and the earth starts shaking and the Anyway, <laughs> trains blazing at like 1,000 miles an hour and it's like tons of metal just rolling by you so you you can't hear yourself for a second and it startled me and then you look out there and everybody's like waiting for you to like i guess they've been there before and they're, and they're used to the train because it so when you're playing you're going oh my god what happens if somebody put a penny on it you know and like, nah, it's gonna yes. derail so but it's a great it's a great little venue great sound Cool people um, usually have two things going on. The uh, rail house, uh -huh, because of the rails. The right, there you go. Um, I think it used to be like a, a watering hole for uh, trains mm -hmm. or, or, or something, something to that nature. But um, they usually have music on a little stage on the outside with an outdoor bar, and then on the inside, um, they usually have some a DJ or somebody in there playing acoustic music. Yeah. So, it's a great place. Yeah, yeah, man. So for all the places that are closing, I guess the point of all this is for every bar that's closing, there's one or two popping up. It just doesn't seem to be in the hub of downtown anymore. And there's the Coral Snake, I think, is a new one uh, on South First, if I'm getting that right. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't and, know that. Uh, a lot of, lot of music that you see from the east side over there, but they're mixing it up with some other bands. I know our friends at Ghost Wolves played over there on their first weekend open. That's cool, and, man. Uh, they, that they're still a band. So. Uh, oh, yeah. New Baby. Oh, wow. Yeah. You a know. Baby Ghost Wolf. A, a baby wolf. Yeah, uh, those are great folks, man. Yeah, I'm ambassador. They'd be so kind to play us some more music. You yeah. know some songs, you guys? Yeah. Sounds good. Awesome. Let's do Crooked, Crooked Cop. Crooked
You're only as popular as you think you are, my friend. Go in there and take it. Don't ask for it. Right, right. <laughs> we will be playing yes. your stage on the 13th. I'm looking forward a, right, to being right. a lot uh, of people coming to your venue and buying lots of alcohol. That's what I try. <laughs> I, um, but no, I mean, I, I, the way I figure uh, is when you speak uh, Edward Hamill, that's almost like, um, you know, just he's, he's, he's an icon in this town, and he's probably an icon a little bit everywhere. Yeah. Um, it's one of the only claims to fame that we have from Capsize. He was signed from his appearance on the show. Wow. So, yeah. Mercury Records. Dude, how great is that? Yeah, it's kind of cool. You know who else? Um, I, I went to South Austin Music. There's hardly any... Music store, straight music moved out to I think uh, B Caves or somewhere. So. It looks like Lightning Music now. What <laughs> does it? Yeah. Like you, for all you people, remember Lightning Music? That makes me old. Yeah, officially. Um, but uh, I went over there to South Austin Music, and I'm, it's amazing who you can see there. You know, you see guitar, some of my guitar heroes, some of your guitar heroes, and you know, you try not to fucking bug them because they're there doing their thing and. So I, used, I walked up to uh, Doyle Jr. and I just, hey man, I just wanted to say, uh, I love your music. I saw that you just played. Can't wait to see your set. And he goes, Nathan. And it kind of takes you back that people know you, you know. I still get, uh, I've done this for a while, but yeah. um, it's still, you know, this motherfucker knows me. And he's, you know, but uh, uh, I try not to bug him, but was talking to Tony and the Beaumonts are playing again. But if you don't love the Lord, you're fucking you're fucked. Fucking fucked. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're great. But uh, Tony is also um, road managing Alejandro Escalado. Nice. He doesn't even need earplugs anymore. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know, and I see Alejandro and that dude plays 366 days a year like he is he's out and 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 doing little theaters and i'm going man that's 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 alejandro you know and and it's good to see him not just in this market but a bigger market you know
I strange when you're a stranger? Faces look ugly when you're alone. Women seem wicked when you're unwanted. Streets are uneven when you're down, when you're strange. Faces come out of the Clifford Anton, and you're watching Capsize All Texas Music. Give them a listen, they're great. Sometimes I feel like I am drunk. Possibility, however it may roll. Give it a spin, see if you can somehow factor in. You know there's always more than one way to say exactly what you mean to say. Was I out of my head? Was I out of my mind? How could I have ever been so blind? I was waiting for an indication. It was hard to find. Don't matter what I say, only what I do I never mean to do bad things to you So quiet, but I finally woke up If you're sad, well it's time you spoke up too hard to find Don't matter what I say Only what I do I never mean to do bad things to you So quiet But I finally woke up If you're sad Then it's time you spoke up I did the from the second South by Southwest till about their 15th. Yeah, yeah. And after a little while, you this is my experience. I can't speak for anybody else's experience. But uh, first off, you're playing for free, and they give you this badge so you can go to certain clubs and see other bands that play for free. And so... And paid to play for free. <laughs> so it's, it's and paid to play for free. You, you know, don't, don't forget. Yes, yeah. and uh, the city talks about how much money annually um, the South by Southwest brings. And um, as a local musician, we're not seeing any of that. Uh, and the hardest part is. It's like when you live on the beach and spring break comes, you're hauling ass because you don't want to be around a bunch of folks like that. You know, you're just like, take over my beach. I'll come back when you're gone. And that's the way I feel about South by. So you know? it's funny you, you mentioned that because um, as of late, 
after the first few, as you mentioned, that we both went to that were a blast. Right. Um, South by Southwest has gotten into a procedure where they pay musicians to play. Wow. Yeah. Now, there was a an act that they wanted to pass where they were paid more money, more money. But um, currently, the 24 applications launched just a few weeks ago at the time of this taping, June 27. Um, as a part of it, South by officials said domestic acts are eligible for monetary compensation in place of artist credentials. So if you don't want credentials, you can get money. But that means you can't get into the shows and you don't get badges. So they offer access to certain South by Southwest features. Uh, next year, eligible bands that opt for pay will receive $350 while solo artists will receive $150. So being musicians, um, how do you say it nicely, right? It's tough. Being musicians of the caliber that South by Southwest used to to book when we went and had a good time. Um, that's a nice little bit of money. You should be like, okay, that's cool, you know, but honestly, you should be getting that locally, like on the regular, right? Right, right? But with the caliber of musicians that South by Southwest seemingly chooses to put in these gigs over the last, I'll say, decade, um, they're signed bands. They're bands that get paid already. So I imagine 150 on a solo gig and 350 for a band gig is like, what? Yeah. I guess yeah, it's yeah. money you don't have. Right. But I would understand why they're asking to get more money. And, uh, you know, it just says band. So is that a, all of a sudden, a solo act's gonna be a duo in a heartbeat, right? Right, right, that's right. a band, right? Right, right. Or is that gonna go 350 for the eight piece samba band? You know, like, it's ridiculous. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, and then, if you don't opt for the bread to get the credentials to go ahead and go see these other people who opted for credit. So it, it's like, how much is a badge? Mm -hmm. The badge for the whole thing, I think, is almost 300 bucks. At least, yeah, and I know there's the levels of badges now. Right, right, yeah. and so, of course you want the badge. Yeah. But then, on a positive note, to say, as a local, and having South by Southwest come, mm -hmm. For me, this is the positive that I was able to spin into it because, you know, being from here and doing the first 10 or 12, it was, you know, you kind of get, for lack of a better word, butthurt about it all. Sure. But um, is the networking that you can do within um, that couple of weeks where everybody just swarms into town. So if you go rub elbows, you can find somebody in uh, Beaumont. You can find somebody in Dallas. You can find some people, a band's from Oklahoma. And you meet them, and that's how, and you're networking with those people, which really has nothing to do with South By, other than everybody's coming and playing unofficial shows, uh, gas stations, backyards, you know, and you meet those people on your own, and that's the that's a positive that I was able to come out with it because sure. you are getting to meet those people that you normally that normally wouldn't come here. Um, so that's the positive that I've been able to spin on that. I think somebody said it's not what you got, it's what you give. Yeah, man, and we've been given a lot. <laughs> you know, like yeah, it, it, it seems, you know, and and a lot of musicians. I was just talking to. Uh, uh, John Pointer and Jimmy George, uh, uh, who we all were acoustic players that, that I don't want to say built this scene, but we were part of the music scene for a very long time to where they were saying this is the live music capital of the world, where we were live musicians making that happen. Totally. And it seems like... Um, you know, sometimes it feels like uh, you're abandoned almost. Right, right. You know? It is, man. And sometimes, unfortunately, that's what it is. Right. So, so you got to do what you got on your own. So you fucking keep kicking ass? House shows? Yep. Whatever. Well, for me, it was mostly uh, being sober. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everybody goes, Nathan, like all of a sudden, man, you're abandoned. You're singing better than ever, and you're trying to stand. <laughs> And I was going, dude, man, it has a lot to be with, uh, a lot to do with me being sober all right. of a sudden. It's like before I was jumping up and down, thinking that the show had to be an idiot, 
you know, uh, or I had to be, hey, 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 check me out, what up, what up, you know, uh, Van Halen style. Totally. And then uh, there came a point to where you would watch and you'd be, what? <laughs> you know. God bless recordings. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> man. But uh, I was having a, I was having a riot. I was having a great time. You know, somebody uh, in an affluent band said, uh, "Nathan, I'm gonna tell you a story." And whenever you first start hearing that, it's like, "Oh, Jesus." He says, "I moved into town. I couldn't believe there was this television thing going on, which in my town was unheard of. And one of the first bands that he went and saw was uh, um, Dancer." And uh, he said there was somebody up there in some tight pants and those elf shoes. So that was Larry Club. We used to wear those European French shoes or whatever they were. And uh, up there jumping up and down and screaming. And he goes, man, first off, you scared the shit out of me, you know. But then uh, that was the introduction to the awesome music scene. So uh, it, it, it's kind of cool. And I think that was probably during South by Southwest. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So um, it's not who you know, it's who you blow. <laughs> and, and, you know, rubbing elbows with those people. So that's a positive spin with South By.
So it is capsized, man. We're talking about Texas music, and that's uh, what we live and breathe. Big passion for it, and uh, we hope you catch that vibe. And if you got a band you want to get on the show, you can reach us and get on the show. If you have a band you go see and you want to see them on the show, we're all about that, too. So, Dave, is there a way that people uh, easily get a hold of you? Like, um, is it through... um, Send up smoke signals. No, there's a, a I link you tree. Yeah, I did. So uh, there's <laughs> a link tree. The whole you time. have, man. <laughs> so link tree has got all my socials on it. My email is capsize at gmail.com, capsize at yahoo.com. And of course it's spelled very weird. So mm-hmm.